Peace and blessings everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Albert and today I woke up craving for a latte. And instead I got a mocha. I know what you're thinking, yeah, and that's a little bit lame. But nevertheless, I got this car over here. Long story short, I have this car from my friends at CarZ. CarZ are a specialized second-hand car dealership located in Ipswich. All their cars have six months RAC warranty, which is extendable up to three years. If you have a low credit score, well, CarZ can provide you finance as well. If you want your car delivered all the way across UK, they can provide that as well. So check them out at carz.ko.uk. Ah, yeah, one more thing. If you want to part exchange your car, you know where to go carz.ko.uk. The new Vauxhall Mocha is a compact SUV that was introduced to represent the old version of the Mocha. The new model has a new refresh design, new features and a new platform. All of this combined together makes this one a very strong competitor to the SUV market. In this review, we'll take a closer look at the Vauxhall Mocha 2021. We're gonna see if the features, the car itself, and the way it drives provides the value for the money. So stay tuned and we're gonna find out by the end of this episode if this is actually a good car. The front end of the Vauxhall Mocha has a bold and intriguing design. The bold and distinctive front grille gives the car an assertive look. The LED headlights and daytime running lights provide excellent visibility and gives the car a high-tech feel. The front bumper is sculpted and gives the car a sportier appearance. The Vauxhall badge is prominently displayed in the front of the car, giving it a sense of elegance. Overall, the front end of the Vauxhall is a perfect blend and style and functionality. And of course, look at it. It's very sleek and very modern. The front bumper, it looks very sporty. We have this honeycomb grille here, which looks good. Now, I do like the fact that it's a little bit different than the front grille, because this one, as you may see, it has a black glossy plastic. I do like how the fog lights were inserted right over here. You can barely notice them. And yes, they are LEDs and they look quite good. One certain aspect that I like, and I find a little bit elegant and gives it a little bit of class to this car are these side vents here which they are not fake surprisingly and due to the fact that they have this chrome finish here complements the rest of the car overall i think it's a very good looking front end what do you guys think let's open the hood for this car to see the little engine that well this one has and um, yes this one has a 1.2 petrol engine which develops 100 horsepower around 205 uh, newton meters and well it has a fuel consumption uh, of around 49 to 51 miles per gallon which is impressive now this is a little nimble car uh, it's not fast this one has a six-speed manual gearbox which changes gear smoothly and um, well it gives you the amount of power that well you actually need uh, i'm a little bit more pretentious and i like more powerful cars but well you get what you get so you know when life gives you lemons sell them and buy some chocolate so or a mocha if you fancy one 
from the side you immediately notice that this is a very sleek and uh, very stylish little SUV. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start with the wheels. These are 17 inch wheels. They look brilliant in this two-tone color, but somehow these are, well, let's just say like a fashion trend to this car, because as you can see, it has black and well, some chrome finish, which goes perfectly with the black mirrors and the chrome finish here, and as well with the black rooftop and with this black plastic that complements uh, the side of the car, giving it, well, kind of a off-road feeling, which of course this isn't, but I do like the side of the car. Looks modern, elegant, stylish, and somehow like a little off-roader. The rear end of the car is equally impressive and reflects the same level of modernity as the rest of the car. The vehicle has a distinctive rear design that is characterized by sharp lines and angles that gives it a, well, very sporty style. The rear tail lights are positioned up into the rear pillars and has this beautiful pattern that, well, gives the car a very modern and stylish design. The rear bumper is elegantly sculpted and provides a seamless integration in the rest of the car that provides this aerodynamic look. In the rear bumper we have the parking sensors which they are hidden right over here as well as the fog light. One key aspect that I like about this car is the rear view camera which is hidden right here. Also one thing that I do like about it is this spoiler which gives it a more modern and sporty look. Overall the whole shape of the car is very modern, sleek, elegant, sporty and at the same time, well, looks like a little bit of an off-roader. In my opinion, looks quite good, quite stylish. And, well, what do you guys think about it? This car features a modern and spacious interior. With ample room for passengers, the seats are comfortable and supportive and they have this uh, high quality materials that gives a very luxurious feel. The dashboard is very well organized with intuitive controls and a very sleek design and well with a sleek touchscreen and infotainment system that has a lot of options. The cabin is impressively quiet thanks to these sound blockage materials that actually keep the noise outside. Overall the interior of the car is the perfect blend for style and functionality and it's providing a very comfortable and pleasant experience for the driver and the passengers. A couple of things that actually sparked my attention immediately when I jumped into this car is the design of the dashboard. You have this beautiful trim over here which is quite impressive considering that this was a low budget car and well I never thought that Vauxhall or Opel because they are the same well, the same brand. I never thought that they are gonna create such good cars and today I got this car and I was quite amazed by it. I like the quality of the materials. I like the fact that you have leather on your door side handles. You have this gray leather over here and the seats also look very stylish. The whole aspect of the car is brilliant. Now, there are a couple of features that also this car has and are mighty impressive. You have a 10 inch screen uh, for the infotainment and you also have a seven inch for the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is not very customizable. Actually, it's just a screen and you have a couple of information over there I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, you also get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and uh, well, all these little features and gadgets. One impressive thing is the fact that this car has a heated steering wheel and it kind of blow my mind away because, well, I don't have this in my Mercedes, so I kind of like it. I like how the climate controls are blended into this dashboard. It's very elegant. Somehow the dashboard is a little bit lean towards the driver. Now, one thing that I do like is this air vent here, which uh, somehow blows the air perfectly towards you. This is something that I've never seen in other cars and uh, well, it's an interesting little quirk that I like in this one. 
Nevertheless, you have heated seats and I mentioned about the seats, they are quite good looking and they offer decent amount of lumbar support. Regarding the features that this car has, well, there are plenty. You have lane departure, you have heated steering wheel, you have an adaptive cruise control, you have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and uh, the list actually doesn't stop here because if you go through the infotainment system you will see exactly what I am talking about. Now let's talk a bit about the infotainment system. As I mentioned this car has a touch screen which is easy to use and you have DAB radio, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and things like that you can see here. Also right here we have the temperature for the climate controls, the watch and of course the settings. We have audio settings and we can turn off the screen as you can see this car has a, a nice audio system which to be honest I kind of enjoyed it. It's not the best one in the market but well it's there and it's good. So we have the headlights functions as you can see you have the mood light which uh, it's uh, something interesting in this car. You have the welcome light and guide me home light or follow me home. When you put in the comfort you can see that you have the rear wiper, you have the door unlock and lock. This one is set on the boot only so I'm gonna put it off because it's a little bit annoying. And as well as safety. This car has active safety brake, it has speed recommendation, traffic sign recognition and driver attention warning which these are mostly options for the high-end luxury cars and I'm quite surprised that this car has them. Overall this car is um, quite quite nice to drive. It's very very quiet inside and I'm surprised to tell you that because I wasn't expecting to be this quiet. Uh, overall the infotainment system it's quite simple easy to use you can actually see that it's nothing complicated about it. Down here we have the climate controls and of course the heated seats which they're nicely integrated into this black plastic screen and when they are off you cannot see them you know when when you take the ignition off you cannot see anything but immediately when you put the ignition on you can actually see that the climate controls are coming up to life and uh, you have the options for the heated seats right over here. As I mentioned I like the fact that on the steering wheel uh, we have this button here which represents the heated steering wheel and it's quite nice because well a lot of cars don't have this feature and uh, I like that this one has it and as well like this is the main gauge cluster which is not customizable whatsoever you just have the information that the car gives you and that's pretty much it nothing really interesting about the gauge cluster of this car except the fact that it's a screen ah, jumping into the rear seats of the Vauxhall Mocha well first of all the, into the back seats uh, this car can actually fit three adults you have plenty of uh, headroom and you have decent amount of legroom. I have the car adjusted as I said and you can actually see that uh, you have a couple of inches uh, until your legs hit actually the front seat. Back here there's really nothing interesting. You don't have an armrest which is annoying because uh, I don't think that you're gonna carry three adults or three kids in, uh, in the back of your uh, mocha all the time and well you do need to have uh, rear armrest. One weird aspect is the fact that you don't have any cup holders and this is uh, something that I really don't like about cars that you don't have where to put your drinks if you are a rear passenger. Which is annoying but well what can you do? So yeah this is the back seat of the Mocha, nothing interesting, a little bit of waste of time. I believe the time has come to test drive the Vauxhall Mocha. We are putting the seat belt on because this is a safe thing to do all the time. You need to put the seat belt on. Right now I'm gonna adjust a little bit the climate controls because I'm a little bit hot. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put this car into reverse because this car has a rear view camera, which is quite impressive. 
let's talk about the features that this car has because for me it was a surprise to see that this car has a lot of features on it including um, this lane departure including the adaptive cruise control including the heated steering wheel for God's sakes this car has more options than my car which I know that this is like me being a little bit fussy but still I never expected that Vauxhall or Opel which because I told you they are, they are the same thing uh, they will actually put this amount of technology on their cars which is mind-blowing for me and uh, I kind of like it because this is forcing the other car manufacturers to step up and this is a good thing because you know most of the high-end luxury cars offer these options but for a higher price and some of them even if you pay a higher price you don't get this option like the heated steering wheel when come on this this is something really neat and interesting and i do love this feature on uh, on any car i think i've seen it uh, for the for the first time in my life on the range rover vogue which when i saw it in 2005 was mind-blowing anyway regarding the car's practicality this car is very practical you can fit five adults um, it's smooth and comfortable and well it's pleasant to drive uh, the gears shifter is very precise uh, the clutch is light the steering wheel is precise and light at the same time so um, it's enjoyable I like the fact that the steering wheel has this flat bottom I, I think I'm noticing a trend here I think uh, a lot of car manufacturers are starting to get this uh, steering wheel thing and uh, well I can honestly tell you that I like it um, one thing that I don't like about this one is uh, this uh, gauge cluster that it's not customizable at all you don't have any kind of options to customize it which is uh, annoying because it could have been very useful and uh, well probably uh, you need to spend more money for this to to have these features the gear shifter as well looks nice the climate controls the infotainment screen and everything else in this car feels nice and pleasant even the window controls are nice pleasant and elegant right here another neat thing is the dashboard layout honestly i am surprised by how quiet this car is and uh, regarding the price and the, regarding the maintenance and regarding all the things that you actually pay for having this car i can safely say that this is a car that it's worth buying so if you have a small family and uh, you want to have better protection for your kids and for your wife i think this is the car to get in my opinion i would get the automatic one i wouldn't get the manual uh, i have to stop and press this uh, automatic stop button which is annoying uh, i'm complaining in all the cars and i'm complaining in this one as well so it's quite economical quite good you have low insurance low road tax um, it's not going to be expensive to maintain uh, the miles per gallon are good you do like 49 51 miles per gallon which is impressive and um, the only drawback is that it's not very powerful but you don't really need power in uh, in this little SUV because well where are you gonna go if you want a more powerful version you can get the 1.2 turbo which has 130 horsepower or the 1.5 uh, but well I got this one so I have to talk about what I have and yes it's okay anyway this was the video for today guys i hope you enjoyed it press a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel a lot of cars are coming and uh, by the way tell me what you think about the opal and Vauxhall mocha till the next time take care of yourselves all the best to you